I'll try to make it fresh. <laughs> How'd you try to make this movie fresh? Uh, how did I try to make this movie fresh? I tried to bring in the characters who we hadn't seen before a lot of, and um, tried to give it a spin where it wasn't the usual um, rhythm of a normal superhero movie. So the pacing's a little different. It's action-packed, but it's a little quirkier than a normal Justice League would be. Was there a process because of the live action project where ever went the dissolution of it where this concept was before that, during that, immediately after? Um, there was buzz about that happening, but it kind of was a maybe. It was more of a rumor when we started. No, you know, uh, I think Del Toro was attached to it yep. for a while, that but big push. we hadn't heard anything on it, and, and home video expressed an interest. And um, I knew there was a movie we could do, and I knew that it could be something that wouldn't be stepping on the toes of any live action thing because there's so many different ways you can go with that title. So we knew of the potential for that movie, but it wasn't a reality when we started. <laughs> Was there a character like, that you wanted to see the first time that you were most excited about? <laughs> Mainly Swamp Thing, just because he hasn't been in animation for a long, long time. And we always wanted him in our first, the original Justice League show that I worked on and then Brave and the Bold we wanted him and so his rights were always tied up until recently and so when they became available we jumped on it so he's the main one I mean I like the Spectre too but we've done some things with him he's not in it yeah and I was wondering if there was any uh, inspiration from that Spectre short that you guys did well just that that was pretty much a straight horror yeah. tone yeah. and I wanted to keep that tone with this and, and you know they don't necessarily have to be in the same continuity but they could be so I mean hopefully if this sells well and we get to do another one I get to use the Spectre for that so that, that's my goal you know, I get bored fast, so I like all kinds of tones. I don't like our movies to, I don't like to make the same movie after, you know, like when I, so I want the tone to be different. I mean, the, the tone in Just League vs. Teen Titans was a little more, there were occult elements, but it wasn't horror. Um, whereas this is straight up horror. And uh, so I want each, in the next one that'll follow, we'll have a different tone. So, just to keep keep it fresh, keep me in, uh, from getting bored, basically. It also applies to the visual palette. I mean, there's been consistency between live and animated and do have your own sense of like well, want these things to overlap or be different. For the for our line, Phil Barras is the designer. So the thing, you know, the characters generally, you know, he and I work together to. Um, to tweak, you know, if it's going to be hard, then his usually more streamlined technical look may not work. So, you know, I just kind of try to put nudge him toward maybe things he wouldn't necessarily draw, and he really takes to that um, as an artist. Um, our, we changed the color palette for different tone movies, so this palette's a little darker. Um, definitely more geared toward horror, so the, the you know the palette is a little more desaturated. The blood is very vivid, you know, that more of a hammer movie kind of take. So, um, you know, we do those things in production. Just, you know, the form follows function. So if. Um, um, if we want it to be a certain kind of movie, that dictates how. It was like I did this movie around the same time I was doing Return of the uh, Cape Crusaders, and that's a whole other, you know. So it was uh, being able to juggle that takes uh, some concentration. Would you rather we watch it on the big screen? This one, yeah. dark. Yeah, I think so. I think it, I think it holds up. Yeah. Yeah. As an old comic reader, you know, did you look back at those uh, good runs of the DC horror stuff? Old? <laughs> <laughs> yes. As a reader, as a reader of old comics. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, no. You know, I, I, you know, I grew up on the original Swamp Thing and, and those House of Secrets and all that, um, and horror movies. So. Um, I didn't really, we didn't read so much of the, the, the actual book, 
because tonally that book was a little more, um, it was very interesting, but it was very internal. Like, you, it was more about concepts and not really concrete visual things that you could show um, in a linear kind of visual fashion. So, um, even though it was a comic book. So, um, yeah, we, you know, there's elements of, in this one, I think it's, tonally I went in thinking it should feel more like an art, you know, Dario Argento movie. I oh, wanted awesome. that kind of, it's not like universal horror. It's very that queasy, I don't know why this is weird, and, but it's weird kind of thing, even with the music palette a little bit. So. Just trying new things, you also I'm sorry, I missed the last part. What would you like to see done with Justice League that hasn't really been done on that episode? Oh gosh. Um, I, you know, the thing with Justice League is the, the trap to me is that it, it becomes just plot. Whereas with the Titans, it's more about character. Like, the plot is, okay, is good, but it's really about teen, teen angst. And it's about, it's about something other than just superheroes and powers. And a lot of the writers tend to focus, when it comes to Justice League, they kind of freeze up and make it all about their powers, about the plot, who's the villain, and you don't get a lot of that interpersonal you get a, stuff uh, that, you know, it took us a while even on the series to get to that. I mean, it wasn't really until Justice League Unlimited that we were able to, to find the little nuances of character that made that show, I think, really good, eventually. It didn't start out that way, though. Um, so, it, I'd love to be able to take a Just League, and to do it, I'd really need a Netflix kind of situation where you have a lot of episodes to tell a sprawling, character-driven story. And so, you know, where some a show like, to me, Young Justice kind of has achieved that, um, because it's very arced out, and uh, I think you need that much real estate to do that kind of story, and I think Justice League... Uh, <laughs> is a prime, you know, it's, it's fodder for that. It'd be great to do something like that. With the movies, I would like to do more of an anthology thing with them where you break each character's story down and maybe, kind of like they did with Emerald Knights, the DVD, where it was about, it was short stories under an umbrella of a Green Lantern Corps story. Just so we can explore, because I mean, you know, we've done several one, uh, Justice Leagues, but Wonder Woman hasn't gotten a lot of love, and I'd love to get to deal more with this version of her and see what makes her tick. So, just finding the time and the, the film real estate to tell certain stories. There's evidently a rumor about this film uh, getting an R rating from the MPAA. Uh -huh. Do you have a comment on that? And really, <laughs> no. uh, in, in, in regard to this subject, do you really think it matters for these films? Um, you know, I never go in thinking, oh, this will get this or this. You know, there's movies that I've stumbled into art on by accident because I was just making the movie I thought was naturally fitting with what the script was. You know, I mean, we don't go out to be sensational or, or try to get certain things. Um, we just tell a good story. And a lot of things are in the comics that you know, we read all the time that we don't think of as being that harsh because we're just used to it being in comics and then you know lo and behold it could be too much for a DVD so um, I have no comment on that <laughs> on that rumor <laughs> fair enough so. Jay, Sort of. I mean, it's not like the main plot of the movie because the Justice League doesn't know they're in over their heads at first. Um, the, do they, how much do they appear? Specific character they, they appear, I'd say, about from the page to the. 10%. Oh, really? So the cast the <laughs> I'm not great at math, so maybe that might be a little more or less than what they Yeah, they're oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we give you a legitimate Justice League oh, okay. before we turn the table over on you. So, yeah. Uh, so they have appearances, but uh, the main story is with the other characters. Sure, sure. All right. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.